Halloween happened, uh, it just happened. And uh, of course, you can always rely on the Trump family to ruin a good thing. And uh, or at least attempt to ruin a good thing. And Donald Trump Jr. did so by uh, exploiting his own daughter and posting her photo on Twitter uh, to make a point about socialism that made no sense at all whatsoever. Case in point, adorable Chloe, very cute, holding a bucket of her Halloween candy. And the tweet says, I'm going to take half of Chloe's candy tonight and give it to some kid who sat at home. It's never too early to teach her about socialism. <sighs> okay. But that can't, the candy, the candy was a handout. <laughs> and, you want to talk about socialism? And <laughs> that's all you guys have ever known. But that's all you guys have ever known. All you have ever known is handouts, handouts from your family. Uh, you know, giving you all the wealth that you've inherited. That is a handout. Uh, getting candy from individuals who are uh, kind enough, nice enough to give a, a treat. Just so they don't get that trick, you know. That's that's a, that's a handout. That's a handout. She didn't work hard for that can. She's a kid, first of all. Don't use your kid for these political points. It's so disgusting. But secondly, like, no, this is not a case of socialism. It was a it was a handout. Okay. Okay. So let's explain a couple more things to these knuckleheads. So first of all, uh, your daddy inherited two hundred million dollars from his daddy. Wow! Congratulations on all that hard work. Um, he, Donald Trump's clearly not telling the truth about his wealth. But even if he was. Uh, estimates show that if all he had done was put his, that money that he inherited from his dad, actually a way lower estimate of what he inherited from his dad in the stock market, he'd have more money now. So, and remember, he bankrupted himself six times. In your Halloween analogy, <laughs> your grandfather gave your dad a giant, enormous bucket of candy, and your dad dumped it out six different times in That's the streets, right. and we're like, oh, I don't know where the candy went. And then his dad gave him even more money. Yeah. And he would have been had more candy if he'd done it right. Anyway, so and then your dad gave you candy. <laughs> this analogy, but you know you were born on third base and thought you kicked a field goal. And he's like, oh, I'm so good. I don't like the socialists. I like capitalists who inherit money from their daddies and granddaddies. Wow, it's, you must be so so proud. And um, and by the way, it's not about socialism or not socialism. It's about teaching your kids to do decent things. Like so, share, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I feel like every good parent wants to teach their kids how to share, but they're like, no, you keep that candy for yourself, Chloe. You worked really hard to earn it. Um, by the <laughs> way, J.K. Rowling had the perfect Twitter response to this. She said, uh, fill her bucket with old candy left by her great grandfather, then explain that she has more because she's smarter than all the other kids. <laughs> so good. Um, and look, you know, uh, what's the decent thing? First of all, uh, I hope he's, uh, and I, again, I don't wanna get into his kids, but what we do is we say, you say happy Halloween, you say trick or treat, by the way, that's the official right way to ask for candy on Halloween. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you say thank you to every single person who gave you candy. And then after that, you are this public school that our kids are going to has a program where they donate to the needy. You know why you do that? It's not a matter of socialism, capitalism. It's a matter of being a halfway decent person exactly. and teaching your kids to be a halfway decent person. Hey, you know what? And we talk about it all the time. You got to be grateful. Look at all these wonderful things that you have, and and some people don't have it. And and wouldn't it be great to share that with them and bring them joy? Exactly. And, and we, you know, we've given some of their toys away to just friends, you know. And and we talk about the joy that they had in their face when when they got it, and 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 etc. You sound like a terrible parent. <laughs> Socialism. <laughs> no, it's being decent. And by the way, if you're actually talking about taxes and how it goes. Well, in that analogy, the government takes that candy and then builds bridges and roads and schools and schools so that other kids could have a chance at getting candy too. It's just <laughs> all of this is always these discussions and these debates are always so fascinating to me because it it starts with this preconceived notion that every dollar, every penny that you pay in taxes just immediately gets redistributed to like a lazy bum or a group of lazy bums that refuse to do any work and, and want to mooch off the system. When in reality, you look at the federal budget, we've been over this a billion times, a fraction of that budget, a small fraction of that budget goes to these government programs, which by the way, repeatedly get cuts in funding um, to help the poor, right? Uh, 
we never have discussions about corporate welfare. We never have discussions about how we purposely, intentionally invade other countries and start wars to give private contractors giant contracts so they can go off and and you know make their weapons, do their drone strikes, do whatever it is that they want to do uh, to profit handsomely off U.S. taxpayers. That is the type of type of welfare I'd like to go after. And and another thing, they pretend like they don't take advantage of any of the uh, things that are built through taxpayer money, right? The roads, the bridges. They pretend as though they never use those things. They pretend as though they live in like this fantasy privatized world where all those uh, you know infrastructure projects never benefited them once in their lives. I don't know if it's just ignorance or if it's just you know. Pretending like you don't know because you're trying to pass off this ridiculous talking point that makes no sense. I don't no, know. No, it's definitely insatiable greed. <sighs> and this clown has never bothered to figure out, hey, how would anybody get to Trump Tower if the government hadn't built a road or all the bridges and tunnels into Manhattan? So let's take away the bridges and tunnels and see how Trump Tower does. But he doesn't care because he's just, he grew up in a bubble where you're awesome for being rich. Rich people are great. And as Trump recently said, why would I want poor people in my cabinet? Because they're not good. Poor people are bad, rich people are great. It, reminds it doesn't matter how you got the money. It reminds me of this study that we talked about a couple years ago. And you guys should go back and watch it. If I remember it correctly, it was a group of people who were playing a game that was very obviously rigged. They knew it was rigged, okay? And so one group would constantly win in this game knowing that it was rigged. It was slanted in their favor. And as they continued playing the game and as they continued winning more and more, they got this like weird sense of entitlement. They started like crunching on their snacks loudly and yelling and they were super boastful. And they had this sense of entitlement as if they earned it, right? They're, they're more talented or they're more skilled than the other player. But again, for the billionth time, they knew it was rigged and it didn't matter. Like they somehow, you know, convinced themselves that they were better. No, look, it's human nature, guys. It's not just to blame it on Republicans or anything. So the game was Monopoly in that mm -hmm. uh, study, and they had more money to begin with. Uh, but they kept saying, like, oh man, I'm really good at this. <laughs> and and look, I catch myself doing it. <gasps> and, but at least we're know enough to catch ourselves, right. right? So in fantasy football this week, I won, even though I had the second lowest score in the league. I was super lucky. I just played the guy with the lowest score. Mm -hmm. uh, but I caught myself going, man, I started the right quarterback. Nice job. <laughs> it's just luck, right? And nobody's luckier than Donald Trump Jr., but he doesn't know it. Yeah. And finally, I love Anna's point about the candy. Let's say that you had 100 pieces of candy and he took away 50. One or two of those candies would have gone to the poor or middle class. Here's seven to Lockheed Martin, yeah. right? Four to the oil companies for subsidies. 37 to the banks for a bailout, exactly, right? Yeah. It's It's actually corporate socialism where they privatize the gains and socialize the losses. On to the rest of us, that's the real problem. If you like this clip of the Young Turks, you know there's a whole live two hour show, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern every day, and you can download it or stream it and watch it without ads if you become a member. TYTnetwork.com slash join.